Alright, so today I want to do a little video on uh, disassembling your hydraulic lifters. Now I understand there's already probably quite a few videos out there on this process and I've seen a few of them and really they're just not very honest about some of the difficulties you'll encounter in this process. Oftentimes they use a new lifter and really that doesn't, um, it's not going to have a lot of the challenges that you'll encounter with, you know, some used old gummed up hydraulic lifters what I have like what I have here today so anyway we're just going to go through that process address these challenges and um, you know I'm going to share something special with you all today it's a tool I made a long time ago which really just makes this process that easy and um, you know you can either make it yourself it's pretty simple and and you'll soon see so um, I guess some of the reason you might be doing this is um, you got a little bit of lifter clatter when you start your engine you know you just have old oil that's sat in your lifters they're a little carboned up they're not sealing well so you'll have a lifter clatter issue or um, you know maybe you just want to do what I did here with this old used lifter where um, I use it for piston to valve clearances and a lot of engine check stuff so basically I've turned it into a solid lifter and I'll also show how to do that today and even um, call out some of the parts and pieces that I use to create this so anyway without further ado I guess we'll uh, move the camera here so you can get a real good view of what we're doing and we'll go right through this thing and should be good all right so some of what you'll need for this is a couple of half inch wrenches so um, what i have here is just a socket wrench and that'll be just fine for what we're doing um, a pair of vice grips a screwdriver and really that's going to be about it other than our tool um, so this is the one i've used for a long time and as you see it's taken quite a beating but really it doesn't get any more distorted than this and it'll just continue to keep on working and working it's completely reusable and completely reliable and you'll really appreciate how this works but basically um, it started life as an expandable anchor kind of like this and these are my backups that I've really never even as you see had to alter and use but anyway momentarily you'll see why these are so important and why they work so well to really overcome the main challenge with disassembling lifters so without further ado again I'll set up the camera and you can kind of see as we go through this process all right so here's our lifter I just want you to get a good look at that guy and see just how dirty it is obviously I didn't clean it before this process and normally I do but I just want to show how well this tool works it's gonna pull everything out right through all this grit and grime so to start out this process i'm going to go ahead and put it in a vise so um, now as you see here i'm mounting it directly in the vise now what i usually like to have is some of those aluminum clips that go over your vise um, so you're not going to damage anything but this lifter is hardened you can tell by the sound and we're not removing any material we actually we're just moving the oil around which just goes to show how nice and dirty it is but you can see if i go on my vise here we're actually moving material, or I guess removing material, I mean, on the vise. So anyway, you know, as long as you don't get too gorilla tight on it, you're just fine. You just need enough to hold this lifter in here. Now it's got a little spring clip in it here, which if you look real close, you kind of saw it in the beginning. If we can get the camera to focus. This little spring clip. So all we're going to do, you want to hold your thumb over this guy, because this can rocket across your garage at 100 miles an hour. So you saw there, I just got it under the lip, pulled this piece out, and away we go. So now it's got this first little plunger in here, and these are always really easy to get out. They must have a um, less aggressive tolerance on them. You can usually just give that guy a few taps on the side, and out she comes. So now that's the easy part of this process. And as you see, I'm not kidding, this thing is full of old oil. All right, so now it's time to start using our tool. So basically in our lifter there, it's gonna go in to this little plunger, go down inside this bore, and when we tighten it up, it's going to expand and lock itself in there, and that's gonna be very important. So we'll get this guy just popped right in here. Seats right down into the bottom. Now, we got oil all over our tools from this nasty guy. We're just gonna tighten this up and you'll see it wants to rotate. Rotate around so you all can see it. This seam. So now I'm gonna take my vice grips and I wanna grip right on this seam. 
So the reason I do that is so when I tighten it up, it's not going to split the seam. It's going to continue to expand. And you'll notice when it's when it gets tight. So there we go. So now we got a nice interference fit. And now we're going to take our large washer, slide it right over the top of our lifter, drop a couple of um, oversized nuts as spacers, a fender washer here. Now we're going to run down this other nut. This is going to be our driver nut. As you see, we've kind of created a puller at this point. And now we'll throw our other two nuts on here and jam them together. So it kind of turns our stud into kind of a makeshift bolt, gives us something to hold on to. Perfect, there we go. And now all I'm gonna do is put my socket wrench on here so um, the body of that plunger can't turn. So everything's locked into place. And as we tighten this up, it's going to pull that lifter, or I guess that plunger out of this lifter. Every once in a while, you might want to check it, but you can pretty much tell by the feel if you got a good pull on it. So we're just going to keep on going with this until it starts to get tight. And once it gets tight, um, you've used up all your length here, and we're going to have to add a spacer if we came down on our other nut. And you can always do a visual check to make sure you are pulling that lifter body out. So you can see how important this washer is so that plunger comes through um, the center there. But as you can see, we've started to pull that guy out of there real nice and easy. And this is something that people really, really struggle with. And I'm not gonna lie, um, in my earlier years until I kind of came up with this, this was always a son of a gun. So now, since we're all the way down, we have to take this apart again just so we can add another spacer and sometimes you need four but most of the time three will do it just fine and that's what it's looking like this time and again remember we're pulling through all the nasty crud the grit and the oil so now we'll run this guy all the way down here Again, we'll just get our jam nut on here so we have something to hold on to and so that plunger can't spin. And now we're good to go. Keep right on going. And I'm assuming she's going to come right out with just three of these. This into a better place to hold on to it there. Threw our wrench across the garage there, but um, there she is, plungers right out of that lifter. So I'll set this down for a second inside the lifter. Come on now, which in this guy is a bunch of oil. Inside the lifter is a spring, and in a moment we'll lay this all out so you can kind of see how it goes together. So now um, you have to get your um, tool off of your plunger. I guess first we want to take our check ball off. So the easiest way I found to do this is just not you don't have to go tight at all on your vise, just enough where you can hold on to it and wiggle that guy back and forth. So there you go. Now inside this guy is going to be your actual check ball and a little spring, so you don't want to lose those. And now you want to get your your plunger off of your tool and again doesn't take much pressure there and we are going to want to find that wrench that I threw across the garage there we go we're just going to go ahead and take the tension off the bottom of our plunger give it a few wax on the top and now we should be able to wiggle our tool 
right out of our plunger and there you go everything is completely disassembled without you know very minimal effort there as you could see all right so now just to lay everything out um, as it was inside the lifter here we got our top plunger our bottom plunger our little check ball and our spring and our little spring cup that goes in the bottom of this guy and then our spring that goes in the very bottom of the lifter so again you can see that was a pretty easy process now at this point what you could do is take all your parts and pieces and grab your favorite parts washer i really like this uh this berryman chem dip it's pretty aggressive stuff and it works pretty well and you can go through and clean all this up and um you know put it back together and you should be good at least you know that everything's good and clean now if you want to turn your lifter into a test lifter like this so that it's a solid lifter for checking piston to valve clearance or um, anything else that you might do uh, what you want to go ahead and do is get some of these um, in m7 class 10 washers so they work really well now there is a washer that fits in there absolutely perfect um, it's part number is z8844 if you throw that on google and put washer <laughs> after it it'll it'll pull those guys up but they're super expensive and so um anyway these these other guys these m7s are pretty cheap so what you're going to do is just if you want to go and use those instead you'd eliminate um, all your spring parts and pieces below your cup throw those in the bottom of your lifter body and then when you reassemble everything it'll be the exact height as the normal lifter as you can see except it's not going to depress at all as it's now a solid lifter all right so that's pretty much it this little homemade tool here which i guess is more kind of like a puller um anyway with this guy it works really nice to really simplify the process and make these um, little plungers super easy to get out of um, roller lifters so if, if you've ever <laughs> You know trying to do this before you've struggled pretty good i'm sure and um, as you saw it was you know nice and simple now if you're interested in the tool itself i could make a few more assemblies of these and sell them off to you guys um, if it's something that interests you um, obviously as you saw there's not too many complexities to it itself but you do need a welder to put a little bit extra um, bit of material on the bottom of this guy so it grabs um, that little plunger so anyway if you're interested in them um, check the Facebook page above and anyway maybe we can get some discussion going on some tech and tune stuff and whatever else you might have questions on on that page so um, anyway that's pretty much it and there you go the easiest way I've ever found to disassemble uh, some old hydraulic lifters <laughs>